Um, so yeah, so we we we've known each other like peripherally for a very long time. We know all the same people. Did did you ever play with the Payson High School Pipe Band, or was it just White Peaks, and that's where we would? No, see yeah, it's, oh, sorry. <clears throat> yeah, that's where I started. And was it was it snare right from the beginning? No, no. So I actually started. I was drum major for the regular people band. I don't know what you call that. The marching American band style marching band. Yeah. yeah. So I was drum major for those guys, but the pipe band was part of marching band back in the day. Right. Yeah. So I started drum majoring for the pipe band and playing tenor drums. Oh, gotcha. Actually. And do you feel like you? Because I know you, you. I mean, snare is kind of your go-to thing now, right? Yeah. Do you still go back and forth sometimes? Like, oh, y'all need a tenor? I'll hop on tenor. Or you want some instruction? I can I can show you some stuff on tenor. Or... Yeah, I have I've played all the drums. I played bass for a while in uh, in one of our organization's bands. Mm-hmm. We had somebody that was going to be out of town or something, so they plugged me in for a, for a game. But you were probably one of those rare plug-in bass players who actually knew what you were doing, not just a piper who was like, I could probably hit that. It's different. You can't hear it. It's weird. Mm. There's something... The science behind it is something to the tune of if the, I don't know if it's radius or diameter, is bigger than the depth of the shell, you can't hear the noise coming off of the shell. So when you get a chance, go stand just off of the bass drum. You can't hear a thing. And then you walk over to where you can see the drum head, and it sounds real nice. That's fascinating. I had no idea. Yeah, it's weird. you got to feel it more than hear it. Huh. So that... Is this kind of uh, this kind of uh, like I know I, you sent me a picture of like your your mad scientist audio setup at your desk there. <laughs> is the 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 study of 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 uh, acoustics etc. something that uh, is a passion of yours that you're drawn to, or is it just kind of you end up picking this stuff up since you are a musician? A uh, little bit of both. So I'm an accountant by day, right? Yeah, and that's boring. So <laughs> I do music every waking moment. Otherwise, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I saw that um I saw that your 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 kids are learning more than one language and I that reminded me didn't you and Amber move to Peru for a while? Yeah, yeah, we lived there for a year. I uh right out of grad school I got recruited to go manage a a branch of a company over there. That was accounting work? No, I was I was managing the whole office. It was just regular business. Wow, man. Yeah. Fun story about Peru. We were in the grocery store, right? mm mm-hmm. Mhm in this place in Peru and I hear bagpipes. Wait, like like live? Like like actual bagpipes, yeah. Really? Like they were there was some guy they were doing like a grand opening for their I don't know what they even call it. The wine cooler the alcohol section of the place. Uh-huh. So they had a piper come and just play. Really? Yeah, so I bumped into a guy from Canada in Peru that played bagpipes, and we went, we played together a couple times. We didn't we didn't do much with it, but <laughs> that's awesome. We went and hung out a couple times. And I I know I mean of course Amber plays pipes. Did she take any pipes down with her to Peru? Any small pipes or big pipes or anything? No, nah, no, nah, she uh yeah. she was just playing mom at the time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, a, a, a very a very time and energy demanding instrument for sure. And and are you two you two are uh, a a pipe band romance product, right? Did you two meet through pipe band and through piping and stuff like that, piping and drumming? Yeah, we met in high school. I, we, I mean, we played in the band together, right? We didn't do anything then. Uh, I bumped into her again in <laughs> no, college. Nobody's and, judging, you know. <laughs> no, yeah, I dated one of her friends actually. Oh, one um, of those stories. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I bumped into her again in college, and then we started going out. Yeah, right on. So I know that you do other music stuff too. When you were in the marching band and the pipe band in high school, um, was it was that all drum majoring and drums, or were you picking stuff up already then, or have you been picking up instruments since then? What's kind of your give me your sort of your musical landscape? Oh boy, where to begin? Uh, the regular kid playing piano growing up. Uh, recorder in elementary school, annoying my parents all the time. I'm sure that was that was training for when you would start drumming, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the annoying part, not the recorder part. Right, right. That's what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually played trumpet all the way through junior high, high school, and into college. You know, once upon a time. What What year did you graduate high school, Matt? Oh, three. Because I, I suspect, I don't want to make you feel old, we're only a couple years apart from each other, but of course, you know, between middle school and high school, it feels like a big difference, you know. 
I, yeah. I also played trumpet and I feel almost sure that you were there at some, you know, you know, the high school, the high school band would come and, you know, like mentor the, the middle school band for a day or something and be like, here, look, you know, stick with it. Cause then you'll be able to do this someday or something like that, you know? And, I keep uh, playing and you too can be like me. No. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I, I feel like I met you at one of those. Um, I, I also played trumpet. And so I, I, or maybe it was just in marching band. I did do marching band for a little while. So I feel like that might be where our peripheral kind of knowing each other began potentially. Yeah, it could have been. Hmm. Well, carry on from trumpet. Then, then where do you go? Yeah. I mean, I went to college with trumpet. It paid for a little bit of it, which ended up being useless because I transferred out anyway and went somewhere else. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then concurrent with trumpet is when I started playing in, uh, in the pipe band in high school, uh, a friend of mine, Michael Christensen. Yeah. Roped me into it. Uh, his whole family played, I think his, uh, his sister's pretty good on pipes. Anyway, played tenor for was a year. Was bass drummer? No, he was a tenor drummer. No, oh, was he? Okay. Yeah. So that's, that's how I got started there. Uh, pretty good at it actually. For, for being a high school kid. Yeah. Um, played tenor for a couple of years, a year, maybe two years. I don't recall exactly. And then uh, all of the snares graduated. Oh. So, so then I picked up snare. Pieces. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> so you, would, you, would you have been there then with, uh, let's see, was it Josh Moody who played snare? Yeah, he was uh, he was just coming in when I was graduating. I see. Memory I serves. See. I was, I'm just trying to think who yeah who who I might have known of at at that time period in that in that band. Yeah, gotcha. So you picked up snare uh, there, and what when you graduated? Did you go straight to playing with White Peaks as well, or had they not quite formed yet? No, White Peaks was around. Yeah. Um, I played the year I graduated. I played that summer with the high school band. I if I recall correctly, that's been. Oh, almost 20 years ago. Um, but yeah, I think the juvenile band, if I remember right, the rules then were if you turned 18 that year, you could still play with them or something. Mm, yeah. Um, so I think I played that season with them, left on a mission for a couple of years, came back and then played with White Peaks off and on for a while. Uh, took a hiatus there and went and played in California with a grade two band for a little while. Nice, uh, nice. Seamus, Seamus Coins group. Oh, Seamus Coin, yeah. Um, is that the, what's now the, I don't know if they were then, but is that the LA Scots? No, nah, it was the James J. Coin Memorial. Oh, oh, okay. He, he started a band in memorial of his dad and they used their family tartan, I think. Oh, that's pretty cool. That man, yeah, life so, goals, so, huh? That'd be awesome. Yeah. Went and played with them for a while. Uh, had no business playing with them, but it was a good, it was a good experience. It, uh, that's really when I started taking drums seriously, right? Mm. Like trying to hang on by the skin of my teeth with a bunch of grown ups in a grade two band. Yeah. That have been playing much more than me. Uh, crashed a motorcycle that year and broke my collarbone. Oh man. Turns out you can't carry a drum very well with a broken collarbone. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There are a few so... things you can't do very well with a broken <laughs> collarbone. <laughs> yeah. Like wash your hair. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, so that was cut a little bit short. When I healed up, I went back to White Peaks for a while. Uh, took a break when I was in grad school. It just got to be too much for me. Oh, that makes sense. That's a yeah. demanding um, schedule there. Somewhere along the way, so Andrew Hoenicke, who is the one that looped me into the coin band, he was the lead drummer there, and he was my instructor. Um, somewhere along the way during grad school, just before grad school, he, uh, he judged the Phoenix games and Wasatch and district had gone there and he gave me a call and he's like, dude, you, you gotta go play with these guys. They're going someplace. All right on. So I switched my allegiance and everybody was mad for a minute. Yeah. You monster. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been playing with Wasatch ever since it's been, God, it's been some years. Yeah, so this is where I where I insert a plug. Like, when are you gonna come play with Garden Valley? You want to come I'm playing with our. I'm 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 instructing our grade four band in, uh, in Wasatch. So I'm instructing our grade four, and then I play with our grade two. Well, and I know that you. I know that you've instructed some of. Well, we have, like like any pipe band, really. Um, we're always struggling for drummers and trying to find more more drummers. Um, and some of our yeah, pipe you, gotta, are you guys, to you guys need more kids. Like, I've got an <laughs> army of kids <laughs> in my right. band. 
That's that's exactly why my <laughs> wife and I are having children. It's it's all for the band, really. <laughs> bringing bringing some drummers up here, but um, I know that Emily, who's one of our one of our great pipers, is now one of our great snare drummers, and I believe she's been taking instruction from you, right? Yes, sir. All right on. Uh, and then Lexi, who played with you for a while, I helped oh, her yeah. out a couple of times. Another great snare drummer. Well, I want to learn to play snare too, Matt, so let's talk after this. Let's do it. It's and easy. You can do two things. You can go tap and you can go zzz. Tap and zzz, huh? And that's it. <laughs> like, you got to worry about nine notes? Nah, two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I do. I do. Like, the music can be done. I've looked at drum music before and been like, well, I don't understand this language at all, but only one line and not on the, you know, a note on either side. That seems... I could probably start figuring that out, hopefully. Yeah, and Scottish is a little easier. Uh, I think it came from the old Swiss drum corps guys. But oh, uh, right hand up, left hand down. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Rather than having to write R L L R R R L L L all across your music like they do in, in American drumline. Man, does that kind of make you start thinking like, ooh, why don't, we, why don't we change this in American drumline? Like, doesn't it seem so quick and easy to do, do top and bottom? Yeah, I don't know why they do it. They're... Uh, they're a different sort sometimes. They they really like their tradition. I guess we're kind of the same way, right? Like we dress yeah, up so in true. Yeah. we dress up in in a uniform that's made for fifty degree weather to go and play in Pleasanton in one hundred and fifteen, right? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> because tradition. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, it, and then we can get into all kinds of uh, all kinds of my own personal uh, uh, beefs with uh, why we're sticking to these strange tuning standards and stuff like that too. But. Tradition, that's right, tradition, and that's what keeps us balanced on the roof. So it's yeah, fine. you and uh, you and Lincoln Hilder should get together. Hilder, Hilton, Hilt- I forget yeah. his name. Hil- what? Lincoln Hilton. Hilton. Hilton is it? I think. Yeah, he's now. He's now all it feels about weird. It feels weird. He's to me all now. about non-standard scales and stuff. Oh yeah, I love I love you get those those kind of Eastern flavor scales and stuff. I get excited about that stuff. So um, beyond drumming, have you have you been? You ex- you experiment with other music, other other kind of kinds of music, just for fun by yourself. You play with other bands or anything like that. Oh yeah, I played with. You might know him. You know uh, Spencer Healy, Chase oh, yeah. Healy. Oh, absolutely. Spencer's I, one of the coolest people I've ever met. Absolutely, yeah. I played in a band with them for a while. What kind of band Once was upon that? A time. Uh, pop. Noise. Yeah, and then grad school happened, and we all kind of went our separate ways. Yeah, but the band will reunite one day, right? A, uh, a glorious maybe. reunion. I mean, that's, that's that's up to Spencer, man. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm gonna once we you talk him episode, into it. I'm in. Yeah, we're gonna cut this episode. I'm gonna send him a link directly and be like, "It is time for the Phoenix to to rise again." Um, sold my drum kit when I moved to Peru and picked up a guitar. Oh, right on. And I am now pop competent on guitar. <laughs> I'm not like competent. I'm not good at all, but you give me three chords and I can do it. Right? Yeah. Which three chords are you using most mostly these days? You got a a CGD thing going on. <laughs> Sneak a little Depends A, a little playing. F in there. Yeah. Nice. Now I I understand also that you're you're raising some of your kids bilingual. Yeah. What's that like? Pretty normal. I don't have to do much. They uh so uh, the school district, I think it's not just I think it's a statewide thing. They've got a dual language immersion program. Yeah, I've seen some unfortunately I've I've looked at it. My the school specifically that my kids go to doesn't do it, but other schools in the district, yeah, you can kind of choose like, oh, I'll send my kid over there to do Spanish or over there to do Chinese or whatever. Yeah, so so we were going to do Spanish, right? Like naturally, that would be the easy one. Yeah, yeah cuz you speak Spanish, right? Yeah, yeah. And there's like four schools around that that do Spanish. Uh, but it's a lottery, right? They draw names out of a hat essentially. Oh, I hadn't realized that. And Henley didn't get into any of the Spanish ones, but she did get into the Portuguese ones, so we're doing Portuguese. Close enough, right? It's just Spanish with a French accent. Yeah, it's like Spanish with rocks in your mouth. <laughs> well, we're going to make some people very angry if they hear this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it's been good. And, and as a general rule, the demographic as it is here, if you speak Portuguese, you're going to learn Spanish. <laughs> That's so true. Yeah, the, some, some of the people I know who do speak Portuguese, you know, they end up learning Spanish because they marry someone who speaks Spanish or they... You know, they just need to for work or whatever it is. But no, it's been good. Like, she's she's too smart for her own good. So it's just <laughs> been nice to have something that challenges her. Awesome. Now, when you were back back in high school, when you were drum majoring for the marching band, and then you decided, oh, I'll hop in there with uh, with the pipe band, you, you know, your friend was your friend was like, hey, you know, come play with us. But, I mean, like, you know, you don't have to get too into the details or anything. But, you know, was 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 Amber part of your, your reasoning for playing with the pipe band since she, since she was a piper there? Uh. Didn't really know her very well in high school. Mm-hmm. Like we were in the pipe band and we like talked a little bit, right? But 
No, it was mostly mostly my drumming buddy. Yeah. So the the romance bloomed thereafter after, after yeah. high school. Yeah. Ember Ember was uh like one of the you know like top pipers as I was learning. So I learned a lot from Amber Amber Sean Heather that that group of pipers. They were they were my my original mentors to learn how to play pipes. Yeah. Yeah. That that was my crew. Um, those guys Swan Stubbs. Mm-hmm. Scarf boy. He he came a little later. Yeah. <laughs> What Stubbs he, is he still like out in the middle of the Caribbean doing doctorate work or something like that? I don't know where he's at. He's doing some kind of. I think he's doing his residency now. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So when you when you go to approach like teaching someone pipes for the very first time, or excuse me, I meant drums, man. I it's like it's like a kind of it's like a kind blow of, here, um... squeeze there. <laughs> right. I, sometimes I feel like I'm I'm like a. I'm I'm not tolerant of the minority or something like that. You know, like I've got some sort of like piper privileged attitude that I just I, I forget to use vocabulary for drummers as well as pipers, you know? Like I'm politically incorrect and and in in my in my piping versus drumming language. I meant drums. When you go to teach someone drums, do you have an approach that you like to always start with or is it different for every person? So it kind of varies depending on where they're at on the journey, right? Mm-hmm. If somebody's starting from scratch, it's going to be way different than if I have to unteach someone all their bad habits and reteach them good things. Mm, sure. I've wondered before, just partly because of my own personal interest in learning how to drum, and I wonder, you know, where you, you're you bilingual yourself and you have kids learning to be bilingual as well, is there anything, is there any kind of crossover usefulness or language or, or, or things to be learned for pipers learning to drum and drummers learning to pipe? So... A kind of musical we're, bilingualness, we're kind of, you know what I mean? Yeah, we're kind of isolated here, right? Yeah. Um, there's there's something to be said for knowing what a jig is, right? Knowing what a hornpipe is, knowing what a stress bay is. Like, if you know what those are supposed to feel like already, then, like, the language of what you're actually playing is kind of already there. Mm-hmm. Right? And that's that's not so much the case in you know, super dry, super high altitude, it gets cold here in Utah, but like Scotland, Ireland, like if you just grow up with it, you know what a hornpipe is, right? Mm. Nobody has to like sit you down and tell you, well, it's kind of like a march and it's kind of like a reel, but it's more upbeat and, you know? (laughs) Yeah, for sure, for sure. I definitely have had that experience where like I had been playing pipes for at least 12 years before I actually saw someone dance a hornpipe to a pipe tune. And a light went on. I was like, oh, like seeing the physical movements, how they match the music, that made a pretty big difference. You know, like suddenly I was like, oh, well, that that's why we play them that way. Yeah, that's what I do. Anytime I've got a new drummer in my core, I pull in one of our, we could call them bilingual, one of our drummers who also dances. I pull her in and I say, hey, can you dance a stress bay for me? Because I've got new guys and they don't know what a stress bay is. Yeah. That has got to be a really useful teaching tool. That's awesome. Now, what about yourself? Have you ever learned any anything, you know, you ever pick up a practice chanter? You ever put on a pair of dance shoes? Uh, dance, not so much. I can play your scale probably still. Yeah. I haven't I haven't played much in the way of, of chantering mm-hmm. with some awful crossover noises, I'm sure. Just call them embellishments. <laughs> yeah, embellishments I never learned. I, I learned your <laughs> scale and that's about it. <laughs> Well, that's, I mean, but that's something, right? That's the a little bit of familiarity with what the folks are doing on the other side, right? Yeah, well, and, and I get it, right? Like, uh, when I was playing with White Peaks, I would watch Don's hands more than I would watch his foot. Mm, yeah, yeah. As a general rule. Yeah. What, like, when, when you're practicing, like, you've got this unique situation. Well, I think it's unique, at least, you know, that, like, often when somebody's in the in the pipe band world, usually their spouse isn't also, you know. Um, do you... Who usually gets to hear you, you know, like practicing and stuff? Do you do you have a high level of tolerance in your household for you to go around tippity tapping on your on your drum pads and stuff, or is there like, you know, you've got your basement your basement office set up now? Is that where you like go to your dungeon to practice? <laughs> you know, like don't go don't go tippity tapping on the countertops all day long. Um, yeah, I've got my setup down here pretty nice. I've got a, a drum pad that's hooked to a a snare stand. Oh yeah. And it kind of never leaves the snare stand. It just it, it sits at the right height, and it's always where I want it. That's interesting. Did you do that by design? 
um, you yeah. know, like to, to make it so that you would always have easy access to get right to play in. Yeah, and it's always out, right? Like, so it's just there mm. calling me. <laughs> Tell me anything you have to say about that because I have just, in the last few weeks, for the first time in my life, I decided after talking to Swan about about how to have better habits, you know, you know, around practicing and stuff, he suggested that I try this. So I'm finally trying it. First time ever in my life, I have my pipes set up and laying on a small table behind me at all times, so that I can just stand up and like I I've never done this before. I usually break them down and put them in their case, you know. And uh, so I'm fresh to this sort of idea of having it always ready, but it has changed. It's changed my life. <laughs> like I play so much more because of it. Yeah, like make it easy, right? Yeah. Like that's half the battle is just getting your stuff out. If your stuff's in a bag buried in the corner, like, yeah, I don't want to go over there and pull it out. Like if it's if it's just sitting next to you, it's much easier to just grab and play. Yeah. Do With you... anything, right? Like drums. I've got my guitar out all the time. I've got a case for it, but it's usually out. Yeah. Um, when, when you, just, playing... you, you take away all the barriers, right? And then it's easier to get started. And once you're started, like, why stop? Yeah, like so many other things, the hard part is getting started, right? Was it Newton? Once an object's in motion, it's just going to stay there. Yeah, that's uh, that's nice. I like that. I like that application. Yeah, once, once you start drumming, you just you don't stop. <laughs> <laughs> Until you meet an, a, an equal or, or, or opposite uh, a, a force, you know? like, like Yeah, generally, time or generally like a cheeseburger, that. yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> Do you, when you're, when you're playing, do you find that you most often say like, okay, you know, from five thirty to six o'clock, I'm going to go play music or is it more like you've got these things out and ready. And so throughout the day, like you, you finish up a spreadsheet and you play a few chords on your guitar and then you go back to work or something like that. What, how does that usually work out for you? I'm just curious yeah. because I, I want to learn from the master here, you know, like what are your habits? It, it depends on how work's going. Like I get, I get pretty head down at work too, right? Like once you get started, it's hard to pull yourself out of it. Yeah. Uh, so it's just usually nighttime hours. Is it um, is it somewhat formal though? Do you kind of you not, know Tuesdays are my night really? for guitar, Wednesdays are my night for drums? No, nah, I mean I've got like my teaching night that's pretty formal and my oh, band sure. night. Yeah, but but otherwise no, nah, it's it's just it's just what I do to unwind at the end of the day. Mm. I've I've thought before about like um like of course you knew Zach Lee's mm -hmm. right one of the best. Pipers ever and and a very oh, yeah, good drummer he played, as well. He played for my solos for a long time. Yeah, and uh, we had a little Kaylee band once upon a time too that we mm. played in. So I know that like I mean I would talk to him about practice and stuff all the time and like, uh, like after I don't know high school years basically, as far as I know it, he 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 didn't ever really seem to have a very like formal practice structure. It was just like you know you play when you play. But definitely when learning the instrument, you know, he dedicated a lot of hours to very, very um, focused practice, you know? Sure. And I, I, I've wondered before, like, I'm, I'm, I'm not at that level. You know, I need focused practice for sure, personally, you know? But I've wondered before if, like, it, does this change over time as a person becomes more proficient on any instrument, you know? Um, or is there some need for perseverance in in formality or something like that throughout a person's entire life? I don't I, I don't know. I've just wondered about it before. Yeah, it kind of depends on the person, probably, right? Like I, when I first started learning, I didn't have great instruction. It was mm -hmm. kind of the blind leading the blind in high school, right? It was mm -hmm. seniors would teach the guys coming up, and then a lot of the stuff we learned wasn't even written down, right? It was just well, you play it this way, and this is what it sounds like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially for drummers. I mean, I know that Pipers had the benefit of of Don and and Carrie and 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 all the other instructors there who had been playing for years and years. But for the drummers, it's like if the seniors are teaching you, at best, your teacher has like two or three years of experience at very best. Yeah, like we had we had Lynette at first, and she would she'd Did bring she some drums? good instruction in. Oh, no, she'd bring, she'd, she'd bring some people in. Yeah, once I mean, but it's it's a person once a quarter or something, right? right? Like right. it's not frequent. Um, and then after a while, the high school dynamic being what it was, they tried to pull all the pipe band drummers into the percussion ensemble and have us during a, like a class time. Oh, I see. And that kind of didn't work. So the next year we didn't do that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I had to go seek out some outside instruction and even that wasn't like terribly structured. It was like a list of stuff to play, but it wasn't like, okay, this day you're going to do this and that day that. Um, I don't remember where I was going with this. 
lost oh, my train. Oh, uh, just sort of, is there a shift from formal formal practice, like re- regimented practice, to more loose kind of do it when you want to unwind kind of practice as you become more proficient on an instrument? Um, I mean, I, I, I play more now, I would say, than I did as I was learning. Hmm. And some of that is because I'm teaching, right? Like I've got a time set apart to teach, and then I've got a drum line that I have to get stuff ready for. I've got to write music for them and whatever, right? So these are good motivators. Yeah, and then uh, I've got a. I mean, I'm playing in a grade two group right now, and it's it's a lot of music. I think Swan had probably mentioned it. Yeah, I was asking. On a far, it's like 30 tunes or <laughs> something. Maybe not quite into, that many, 20 yeah, or something. Right, when he first got into the band, I'd ask him, like, hey, man, you know, like like he and I had looked at maybe learning uh, uh, the hard drive, right? And I'm like, hey, man, have you looked at that at all? He's like, no, dude. Let <laughs> me tell you about all the tunes I have to learn for this grade two band. <laughs> yeah, and just keeping those fresh, right? Like not even having to learn new tunes, just keeping all those tunes fresh like right. takes some time. So you do you play with the grade two band there at Wasatch. You also instruct their grade four band. You give private instruction. Um, what other stuff are you doing in this in this sort of pipe band world right now? Uh, I mean, I like to sleep once in a while. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, I mean, that's that's about it in pipe band land. Um, so you got you got for a while. Band. I was yeah, I was helping out at Waspaba for a little while, but that's that's been a long time ago. Yeah. What what kind of job were you doing for them? I was I was doing finance for him. I oh, was their interim finance person. Somebody had quit, and it wasn't time to elect yet, or something. It, that's, that's it wasn't time to elect yet, time or ago. it was time and nobody was willing to do it. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> so you've got your pipe band stuff. You've got, of course, your family. You've got your work. What other things uh, demand your energy and time? Like, what else do you focus your uh, your 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 powers upon when you can? Uh, I mean, I don't really focus outside of that i do like to cook um i picked up you've seen my some of my audio setup i've started producing some music just for funsies on the side is this like um a lot of acoustic recordings of yourself or like midi instruments or um i had a i had a guy commission me for a thing i was gonna start doing covers but i had a guy commission me for some hippity hoppity beats so i've been doing some some midi hip-hop recently Awesome. Are you using uh, like what what kind of software and stuff do you use for that? Uh, I'm using it's, I'm using all PreSonus stuff. So Studio One is the is the DAW. Gotcha. Digital Audio Workspace, I think. Yeah, I I, I hear this word DAW thrown around. I I rarely can remember what the acronym stands for. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. Digital Audio Workspace. That sounds right. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's all that's all fairly recent. Like I'm finally in a super stable spot with work and whatnot right so i picked up some microphones and an interface and some software and whatnot yeah having some fun with that huh yeah what playing around have you tried recording yourself on a snare drum i just i imagine that would be so difficult you know like yeah i haven't pulled my drum in here yet to record i've I've, i do a lot of pad recordings Mm. mostly tutorials for my for my guys on my drum line right yeah yeah um but yeah, I haven't actually pulled the snare drum in here. I don't have good acoustic treatments on any of the walls or anything, so I'm not sure how like hollow box my room would sound. Right. You want me to maybe supply a PO box so that anybody listening can send their empty egg egg containers in to to help <laughs> help Matt build a, a a soundproof room. Help Matt build a studio. Yeah. <laughs> well, my HVAC's pretty bad too. Like it's loud. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what studios do about that. Like. How do you get a heater with a fan to not make noise? Oh, right, yeah. Uh, but I did. We were, I recorded. I, I picked up a Boron a while back, recorded some stuff for oh, Christmas yeah. time with I Amber. Saw some video, yeah, that was great. Yeah, and that seemed to work out okay. So I don't know, maybe we'll I'd... see if I uh, if I get adventurous and enter any of these online solo contests. I'm gonna have to find a a decent spot to record. Right. Have you joined in any of uh, Amber's uncle uh, Larry's backyard sessions? Those uh, Kaylee groups that you're getting. No, I haven't actually did. haven't actually been out there. No, I probably should. Being a family and all. Yeah, I I mean I've talked I've heard about them or talked with them about them for years now and just never made it. And it's, you know now that COVID's happening, it's like I would really go right now. I really would go right now. <laughs> Once you can't have it, then that's when you most desperately want it, right? Yeah, and Swat and I have talked about doing like online Kaylees once in a while, but then COVID hit super hard around the holidays right so we've been we've been staying away yeah well what is your like if you had to say now this was this was this was 
fun or cool or unique? What's sort of a place or situation in which you've played your drums that is, or your drum that is, you know, unique, cool, funny, funky? What stands out in your mind when you think about the the places and and uh, you know uh, events for which you've played? Yeah, I haven't really been to a lot of weird events that I can recall. Um, in high school, we went to Grand Junction. Oh, and, yeah. And won and won the contest, so that was fun. Yeah. With a bunch, of, I mean, we were playing against a bunch of adult bands, right? Yeah. And uh, we went, we uh, we rented a bus together with White Peaks, and uh, so we drove out there and played, and that that was a good time for a bunch of kids in high school to to feel pretty good about ourselves. Yeah, I I also did that trip to Grand Junction in high school. I don't think we won, but it was still a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a good trip. They uh, the games was kind of dead for a while. I think they're they're trying to. I guess they were back last year or the year before. Mm. They uh, they're trying to get us and uh, the LA Scots to go out this year, even when, in when, COVID times. When Was now Wasatch, you know, you've got what do you have right now? A grade two, a grade three. Nah, the three. Oh right, the grade three became took grade the four, right? took the COVID bullet. Yeah, we've That's so we've right. got a two, four, and five right now. Two, four, and five. And are you are you still working? I heard that you were working towards setting up a juvenile band too. Is that still a thing, or are you kind of putting that on the back burner? Yeah, we've. I mean, we've talked about it off and on. Um. It's always the conundrum, right? Like we've got 15 drummers and no pipes or we've got eight <laughs> pipes and no, right? Like it's, yeah. it's getting the demographic, <laughs> right? Fits, yeah. To, to get that critical mass, to get the thing rolling. Yeah. Cause we've got in the state, of course there's pace in high school pipe band. And then we used to have Ben Loman pipe band. Have they become a community band now though? It looks like it's. Yeah. I don't know what's going on program. up at Ben Loman. They, they've had a hard time. Like there's, there's a dynamic that you have to deal with, with government, right? Like. Like when you're a, when you're affiliated with a government entity, it, you've got like stuff to deal with. Mm. Um, they, their instructor for a while was a drummer and they did okay, but now it's like the the choir instructor I think was last I heard was oh, was instructing. Sure. I, I don't remember. Of like, because I know like the, like the Pace in High School pipe band has been organized under like the band director, and so if you could get a like technician instructor who knows pipes and drums, that's great, but. You sometimes have to shuffle it to some other staff member. It's like, oh yeah, you know, you can imagine the administrators being like, yeah, have the choir teacher do it. It's all music. Yeah. Well, that's. I mean, that's kind of the way high school education is, right? Like you've got a clarinet player that's instructing the orchestra sometimes, right? Yeah. right? Like it's 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 just kind of kind of what they have to deal with. Yeah, working with. What they um. Got. So I I don't know what the situation is up there. I know uh, Tyler. And some of his old Ben Loman friends had uh they'd started an alumni band for a while. I don't know what came of that, if that's still around or not. Yeah, I know that I saw them at at least one event in the last couple of years, and I did. I, I was kind of like, okay, these aren't high schoolers. What happened there? You know, is this now a community band? That I mean, that could be cool, but also, you know, I kind of feel for the high school band, just thinking like it's fun to have other juvenile bands around. You know, yeah. Be able to go and I think Utah that. Utah has had or maybe still has a juvenile band. Oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah, they in the past few years they've had I, it, it's weird right because you've got people that grow up and right. then you don't have a juvenile band anymore yeah. but i i know they have had one that's uh i mean that's that's the trick right yeah hook them young and then by the time they're grown-ups you'll lose some but yeah. the ones that stick around will be all right <laughs> yeah zach used as to a tell, general rule zach used to tell us that the uh the best rule to keep in mind when like advertising to recruit new players like to teach them you know people who've never played before um, it just all down the line is 1%. Like if you throw out a hundred flyers, expect 1% of those flyers to actually get to somebody who's interested. And then of the people who are interested, expect 1% to actually come to one practice. And of, of those who come, expect 1% to keep coming long enough that they actually become proficient on an instrument. And of those, expect 1% to stay with your band. The rest are going to go play somewhere else. And just <laughs> if you expect that, you'll never be disappointed. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I like my odds a little better than that, but <laughs> yeah, I, I did when I was at White Peaks. I went through, I went through probably two full drum lines of of just teaching people, and then they'd fall by the wayside. Yeah, get tired of it. Rather play rugby or whatever. Yeah, yeah, it can be a trick to stay. I don't know, motivated. I guess you know when when it's something that we have found and we love, and it's like you want to build it up, and uh, that retention can be. Uh, it's hard to not. Sometimes I take it personally, you know, and I have to remind myself, like, no, you know, everybody just. Life happens, you know, and you you have to. Yeah, and recruiting's hard too, right? Because you've got this so class of new recruits, but you've also got this core group of folks that 
kind of knows what they're doing. So you can't always be in beginner land or else the guys that have been around a while are going to get bored and leave. But you yes. can't always be catering to the guys that have been around because then your younger guys never get any any experience with anything, right? They just sit there and watch. Yes. So it's it's kind of a it's a delicate balance. Yeah. That's that's why Wasatch is so nice, right? Because we've got kind of a place for everybody. You, yes. you get enough, oh, a, a big sense. enough group and enough organization within the group and it, it gets to where you can kind of focus on certain demographics, right? Certain groups of folks that beginner, intermediate, advanced kind of kind of situation. Yeah, it's a big enough organization that you've got you've got capable people who can who can devote their focus to these subgroups of of players and learners, etc. Rather than having you know just the one pipe major who <laughs> who has to do everything. <laughs> yeah. Do you have any favorite uh, pipe bands or um, you know bagpipe adjacent groups or individuals to listen to? You know that you listen to re- recreationally. Most of what I listen to is adjacent. Um, there's a guy Ruben Blades from Panama. Uh, he took a tune from Bad Haggis and like Latino fight it. Oh really? I'm <laughs> that I really like right yeah. now. That sounds awesome. Uh, Templo de Agua is the tune. Uh, it's a failure. bad haggis tune water church got it i'm checking that out for sure um and there's some there's like a bagpipe in the like the the kaylee type groups right like uh glengarry boys or uh who did loud pipes save lives <laughs> i don't know i'm looking that up too. hold on let me type this in loud pipes save lives Pride in one word, mm. with a Y. P R Y D E I N. <laughs> oh, of course I get it. It's because of the the like you know like motorcycles or or um you know like if your if your hog is real loud then you know cars aren't gonna run you over. It's a play on that, right? I get it. Yeah. I get but also it. bagpipes. Also bagpipes. <laughs> yep, I got you. <laughs> I see what they're doing. Okay. <laughs> You ever get excited about the Wicked Tinkers? They come to town sometimes. They're they're fun. <laughs> don't, um, don't say anything that can be held against you in the future, of course. <laughs> Aaron's a real good piper. He really is, yeah. Oh, I I see. Do 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 um do a sort of mm, what would we call it? More regimentedly educated drummers sometimes perhaps feel a bit like the drumming is perhaps uh a bit lacking in that it's uh yeah. Oh, how do you how do you say this delicately? It's I mean Tri- it's tribal tribal drums are different. We'll say it's different. Yeah, that's all it is. It's not better or worse. It's just different. You know. Yeah, I mean, like it's it's a lot of fun. But the problem I have with uh, anyone that goes to the Scottish games, right, is that by the time I would be able to listen to a concert, I've been out in the sun since like eight in the morning. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's been what ten hours. Yeah, of me hanging out, hitting stuff in the sun, getting dehydrated and tired, and like by the time I would be listening to their show, I just want to go lay down. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it, that's when one has to remind oneself that uh, this show is not for me. I'm part of the show, you know. Like this isn't being yeah. put on for me. <laughs> now, what about non non pipe band stuff? You know, like what uh, what other kind of you know music or or what are you binging on on TV right now? What are you in? What other stuff do you consume? Um, I listen to a lot of music, kind of prog rock, pop punk type stuff. Yeah. Um, I listen to a lot of like Coheed and Cambria, um, and then kind of the regular, what do you call, not quite screaming metal, <laughs> melodic <laughs> metal. Like, like, I don't, like I don't know what you call it. Take it up to 11 and then take it back down to maybe like nine and a half and that's about Yeah, like, like right. take it up to 11, leave it at 11, but take the screaming out. I got you. I got you. Like, like the uh, Breaking Benjamin, Avenge Sevenfold, yeah. type stuff. Man, I've got I've got a little three year old girl. She is like the most like delicate, careful little pink and frilly princess girl that you could ever imagine, and she is so into metal music. Perfect. And teach them young. It, oh yeah, man. But the <laughs> thing is, like, you. I think you. I think anybody who listens to metal knows what happens, right? Like. You start 
you started you started an eight and you cannot help but get deeper and deeper into it right like uh-huh. you know like the turn that gain up a little more give me more of this you know and it you know it it your desire for more kind of increases exponentially and sure and i and i do look at my little girl and i think like all right she's three years old and honestly she has surpassed me in her like tolerance and desire for like just how metal her metal is and i'm like She's How gonna, long until she pierces her eyelids? Exactly, right? <laughs> exactly. She's going to max out at the age of seven. I don't. I'm not going to know what to do. <laughs> Is there anything when you're when you're thinking about, um, you know, things like retention and stuff like that? Uh, you know, say you got friends and family or people you haven't met before. Anything about this this pipe band world that you wish you could sort of communicate to others to kind of express like what like I guess what I'm asking really is, what's special about it to you? Why do you why are you still here? What keeps you coming back? What do you love about this, uh, this, this strange group of people, this, this interest, this, uh, you know, this pastime? Yeah. I'm not even sure anymore. Right. 20 years later, <laughs> like, why, why do we even do this? It's just what I do. <laughs> it's just, it's just who I've become. Right. Like it's, it's my thing. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I've, I've kind of given up on the grind of recruitment a little bit, mm-hmm. right? Our, our org's getting big enough and we've got kind of enough people just kind of coming in naturally that I don't have to go. You be the evangelist to, anymore. Right, you don't right? have to go preach it. Um, but even the people coming in new to our group, right? Like they, they'll show up and, oh, this is fun and they'll play, whatever, right? But like it's 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 really the trips that are what get me. Oh, I see. Right, like we, we show up to rehearsal and, and we play a lot. Like we don't sit around and chatter at rehearsal much at all. Yeah. We'll go out to eat after and, and we'll hang, right? But it's it's really the trips that are the the reason I do any of this, right? It's the, it's the going to Edom Claw or Maxville or Chicago or Alma or, or wherever, right? And spending a lot of time with just kind of like-minded, fun people. Yeah. Yeah, those those long hours on the on the road are a joy, not not a pain for sure. Yeah, coming back, not so much sometimes, but going <laughs> so on the true. way, <laughs> on the way, it's, it's, it's nice. Coming back, you're all tired and, just ready and you just want to take a nap. You're just ready to be in your own bed. That is very true. Now, a lot of times I'll ask the pipers about their current instrument setup, you know, because it's interesting to find out what their reeds are, what reeds they're using, what what kind of drones they have, what bag they're on and stuff like that. What, like, what kind of, first of all, I'm curious because I, I honestly don't know, like, what kind of variability is there in, you know, in snare drums, for example? Would you have a personal preference for, like, who makes your snares or where you position them or how tight they are or drum heads or even bodies? You know, like, what what is the sort of, what's sort of the spectrum of like customization and preference and also what are your preferences? So anybody who's ever won anything has a signature stick. I have have encountered that. In fact, I've got some <laughs> Jim Kilpatrick's here on my desk telling me that yeah, I, I haven't play. played, I haven't played Jim's in a long time. Uh, I've been playing Barry Wilson's for the last while. Uh, he doesn't even play anymore. He, uh, he won worlds a bunch of times, world solo drumming. A bunch of times in a row, Did he, start uh, he was like, "It was time to let somebody else have a turn." <laughs> yeah, I don't. I mean, I'm not. I don't know him personally, right? I'm not sure what all went into it, but uh, he used to lead Scottish Power. Oh yeah, yeah, great band. I like listening to them. That's for sure. Back in the day, they uh, they've got. I've got a soft spot for them. In my in my heart somewhere, <laughs> um, somewhere there. partly partly from Barry, right? Just yeah. uh, I, I I liked him. I liked the way he played. I really like his sticks. Um, and then when Triumph Street folded, a lot of the the people I liked from Triumph Street went over and are playing with uh with Scottish Power now too. Mm. Uh but drum setup. Yeah, so I'm I'm playing Barry Sticks. Um I'm told McWhorter's got a pretty good stick, but I haven't tried it yet. I've I've played some others off and on throughout the years. Like I I don't love any of the others I've really touched. Uh drum wise Right now, I like Andante. They kind of come and go, right? Like depending on who's in charge and what the manufacturing's like, and and what iteration of which drum they're on. Mm. Um, but how, right now, I really like Andante. How forest is that they get their wood from? Things like that. I don't know about the wood. <laughs> like drums are only good for four or five years. Really, I didn't know they... that. Yeah, they get. I mean, you're hitting them all the time, right? Yeah. But sense. the shell gets kind of brittle as as time goes on, and you lose a little bit of the tone of it. Is there anybody in that space making synthetic drums? Is that even a thing, or is it just not viable <laughs> acoustically? Hold on, hold on. You might have to cut this out. Let me find them. Uh, 
don't know where or who. There's a there's somebody out there that's making a carbon fiber drum. I see. Like the and whole it's, body. It of looks it. like it looks like somebody sat on it. Oh no. <laughs> Here it is. Here it is. Bally Cohen's been playing them. And I don't know if they're still in business or what, but they look like a like an elephant sat on them. They're carbon fiber, but they're kind of bubbly. Really? Like by design, they like bubble out? Is that for acoustics or something? I don't know. Huh. I, I, that's, that's beyond me. Leave that to the scientists. Cleland. Cleland carbon fiber drums. So there is somebody making synthetic drums out there, huh? Yeah, they're like two grand a drum, though. <gasps> Do they claim that they're, you know, like infinite longevity? Uh I don't know that they're even out of R and D. Not found. URL not yeah, it looks like mm. they maybe went under. Gotcha. But there was there was a I think it was a grade two band that was playing them for a little while. Mm. But no, so so we're playing on Dante's uh on Dante recently came out with a new top head that we really like. The uh the white ones that they're making. Are these You've seen the yellow ones, I imagine. Oh yeah, I've seen those for sure, yeah. So there's uh they make a white one that's basically the same, but it's got a different coating on it to make it white. I see. Uh, we really liked the Evans heads, that uh, the black ones. Mm -hmm. But they would break. like they, They're good for like six months. Mm. And they, the sound off of them was amazing. The snare response I loved, but you just we couldn't keep them on drums. We had to keep replacing them. Mm. And then we're using a Remo bottom head. Uh, not a Remo. Uh, we hate the Remos. I said the wrong word. Evans. We're using an Evans bottom head. Hmm. Um, and, and that's Evans makes a whole bunch of heads. I'd, I'd have to. I don't know the specs on it. But Somebody else is in charge of buying those. The unique thing about Scottish snare is that we've got two snares, right? A snare going across the bottom head and across the top head. Yep. So the bottom head does matter. You know, it's it does affect that that the the what the resonance of that bottom snare or how it bounces up and down. Well, and and you get mo you get a lot of your pitch out of the bottom head. Oh, I see. You get the top head kind of to, to a nice, comfy playing surface, and then most of the pitch comes off of your snares and the bottom head. Interesting. I didn't I didn't know that. So then it's tensioning the snares in the bottom head that's equivalent to sort of sliding your, your drone up and down to get the right the right pitch. Uh, so the bottom snare, you mostly just get it the right tension to where it buzzes nice. Mm. Um, the top one is kind of where you get a lot of the difference in, in pitch. You know, it's 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 always been interesting to me to watch drum cores get ready for a competition or a performance or anything like that because, like, for pipers, don't get me wrong, there's a lot of nuance that comes down to your ear, you know, and sort of the, the flavor for tone and stuff like that. But, you know, for pipers, we've got tuners. You know, you can hold a tuner up and say, is this drone in tune? Yes, it is, or no, it isn't. But when it comes to tensioning a snare, as far as I know, at least, there is no tool. It's 100% a person's ear and saying, yes, that's the sweet spot. Yeah, there's there's some tools out there, some measurement tools, like physical measurement. Right, like they'd measure the pressure or something like that. Uh, so for snare, there's you measure the distance around your rim, mm -hmm. right, which is not a great measurement. Sure, they, then the, you could have the height of the thing, like right? Expansion in the wood or something like that. That could throw. Well, and, and the head will stretch a little bit as time mm. goes on, right? So you have to torque it down a little bit more. Mm. Uh, Andante has like some rulers on the inside of their drum mm. for for your snares, so you can set them to kind of where you like them, and then theoretically you set everybody about the same, and they should sound similar, and then you have to fine tune it from there. Gotcha. No, I had no idea. Yeah, tenors have some cooler stuff. Tenors you can tune a little better, but but snares, there's not really a great tuning tool yeah, do you, that, do that you measures ever, pitch. Do you ever write drum scores, Matt? Yeah, like all of them. So has Garden Valley ever hired you to write a drum score? Nope. Maybe we'll do that because we need drum scores. Um, but I, have, about... I have fixed some of your drum scores. Oh, thank you. That was kind of you. <laughs> it's, it's, it's more like just stuff that annoys me, right? Like Yeah. It's it's like when you see a typo. Uh yeah, you can't really help but like uh, like it sticks out, let right? Me, like let me just get in it's there. It's basically <laughs> circled in red. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wait, wait, it, like it there's does... no way you meant to have three lefts there. One of those has got to be a right. Yeah, and and is there sort of a sort of a tick that happens in your brain where you're just like, you know what, you know what, you know what? Let me fix it. Let me fix it. I'm just gonna fix it. It, it I mean, it's like I'll try and play along to it, 
And if I can't play it, I figure it's wrong, right? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a good, good bar of measurement there. I, I am really interested in like I've never been in a group large enough to have you know three different toned tenors, you know, and have the score kind of play between the different notes that the tenors are playing. Fun uh, story about that. Talk to me about it. Pre-COVID, I was supposed to have seven. We'll see how many of them make it through. Ooh, seven. Seven, and would that be seven players on three different tones or seven players on even more tones? Either five or seven tones. Wow. Wow, man. That's got to be fun. Five is five is kind of the ideal. Yeah. That's got to be a you lot can of do, fun. You can do more. It, it just gets kind of harder to find music to play them in. Like, uh, uh, I'm going to make myself sound stupid now. I have said the wrong. Was it shots that had two bass drums for a while? Yeah, don't feel bad, Matt. If that's wrong, I've been so wrong about so many things on this All right. show. Do some so, some yeah. band somewhere along the way played two bass drums. They yes. were tuned differently, and one of them was essentially a tenor drum for some. So one of them was the bass drum for some tunes, and one was the bass drum for other tunes, depending on if it was a minor or major tune. Ah, that is so cool. That's got to be really fun for a guy who who arranges drum scores because that's like where you get this element of melody inserted yeah. into like a world of rhythm that's got to be so much fun are you aware of any pipe bands ever playing with like a set of quads not in our specific realm yeah uh, i mean i like the you see the middle eastern guys right that oh, do yeah, yeah. like like those kind of guys i would imagine would have had some at some point yeah and then there's the whole world of, of french the Lorient stuff right yeah like if I ever get a chance, that's that's on my bucket list of places to go. Like like steel drums and bagpipes, what could go wrong? Mm, amen. <laughs> <laughs> next next next, we're gonna smash together some banjos and accordions. We're gonna be in really good shape. Yeah, they do. I mean, they've got you. You've seen them, right? The Lorient guys. Yeah, yeah. They've got like the snake snake charmer oboe clarinet things right. that they use. I've always in wanted addition to get one to, of those. Yeah, they've got, I mean, there's a bunch of different sizes of them and whatnot. I, I don't know much about that world. Uh, one of our pipers, Justin, actually went and played with uh Oh, with yeah, I heard that he did, yeah. That would be super cool. That would be super cool. I've always wanted to also, I've also always wanted to learn um, the Spanish uh, gaita and get one of those. Yeah, the, the one drone, two drones. I forget how many I, they've well, got. Yeah, I've seen them in both configurations. Often the second drone is just like hanging out of the middle of the bag, so it's not up on your shoulder. Um, but... Uh, I, I I like the the alternate scale and a lot of times those chanters are set up so you can squeeze a little harder and get a little bit of the second octave out of it and that would be fun. Yeah. Or just use the electro chanter and just use MIDI and set them as whatever you want. That's right. That's right. <laughs> There's the option. My my friends over at the Chanteran are gonna crucify me now. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> you heard it here. Uh Matt endorses the snake charmer or the sandpiper, uh whatever she calls herself. Every chance I get, if uh, if I'm at a place where Chelsea is, I'll take a picture and send it to Andy. Nice. <laughs> My hero is here. <laughs> now, what about? I wanted to ask you more about the sticks, though. Where, where, if everybody who's ever been, you know, like a world champion, has their own set of sticks, what, what is the, what varies? Is it the weight of the stick, the width of the body, the size of the little knob at the end? Is it all these things? Is it something else entirely? The density of the wood? Like, I, I am totally ignorant. Yeah, all all the things. I see. I see. And I played some uh, Eric Ward sticks in high school for a while, and they were just super bouncy. Hmm. Um, I've got some Paul Turners laying around here somewhere that have basically a round head on them. I see. That I that I don't love. Mm -hmm. The theory behind it is you get a consistent sound, kind of regardless of your angle coming at the drum, right? Oh, because it's see. round. It doesn't really matter. Yeah. But I, I like the acorn head better mm -hmm. myself. And I've seen drummers before, especially when they're learning, they often put a sticker on the drum head. Is that a, is that a common practice just to make sure you're hitting the same spot so that you don't get variety in sound across the head? Yeah, so if you get off of the snares at all, it goes from tap to poing, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. And often it'll be one hand. Like one hand will be sitting fine on the snares and the other hand won't. Mm. So you get like a tick point, tick point kind of thing. Uh-huh. I see. And it gets real gross if you're doing rolls. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, the, like the drum is going through puberty or something. Its voice yeah, is cracking. Yeah, something like that. 
Now, is, is there anything, since you spent a lot of time in the drumming world specifically, but you're like, you're married to a piper, do you, is there anything that you would like to climb on a soapbox and say, listen, pipers, you need to, you should understand this about drumming? Not anymore. <laughs> has the, has the <laughs> I, fire I, gone I, out of you? <laughs> I've, I've mellowed out in my you've, old age. You've fought those battles too many times at this point. <laughs> Uh, no, and a lot of it's our, our organization now just kind of, we, we get along better than, than some that I've been in, right? That's good. Like it's, I, I've been in some places where it's always you pipes and you drums and what are you doing? And yeah. but like we're, we're one band, right? Like there's, there's no need for that. Yeah. Well, in and that like, case, we you... found, go ahead. We, we found kind of a sweet spot. Like you guys like to tune like a lot, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> true enough. It's, we've, it's one we've, of our we found pleasures. This... <laughs> We found this sweet spot where you guys are warmed up and mostly tuned. Yeah. That will come in and will play while you're still tuning. Ah, if that okay. makes sense, yeah. right? Yeah. Like you'll you'll still be fine tuning drones and you'll go around and do a chanter at a time once in a while, but we'll come in cuz like the sound gets really sweet what 20 minutes in, 30 minutes in? Yep, that's about right. Yeah. And then it falls off like you get blown out after a while, right? Yeah, about the 40 minute mark you start really deteriorating, yeah. Which historically is when the drums walk in, because that's when you're like tuned, <laughs> yeah, right? So true, yeah. <laughs> but no, so so we try and join a little earlier, and then play while you guys are in your sweet spot, so that we get like good time together, and then we'll break again at the end and, mm. and go play separate if we need to. No, that makes a lot of sense. Now, you. That's good advice, you know. Like, look, I'm personally just for like advice for like you know what can I, what can I what can I applying my own experience uh do you do you like um, drums your drumline stuff line stuff while the pipers are like all right guys well we're gonna right guys well we're gonna run through you know this kin or you know, more like out a minute until the piper the ready pipers are ready you know get your harnesses on and be ready you know oh, but you know gotta be ready no we don't hang much at rehearsal we yeah. rehearsal kind of a lot some of the other places some of the other places that's, that's probably a good strategy yeah, like I, and probably to a fault, like some people need more talk, but I need more reps. Yeah. And that kind of carries over into my style of leading too, right? Like we'll play, we'll talk a little bit about it and then we'll play it again to kind of reinforce it. Mm. And generally it's again and again and again and again, right? Like one more time turns into 15 yeah, in a hurry. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I've, I've, <laughs> I've had to warn most of my students about that just like first lesson, just so you know, I'm going to say one more time a lot of times and that's never actually going to be accurate. I'm, I'm, but I'm, but the way I just yep, one more yep, time, yep, more yep, time. Yep, something will happen. Along the way. It's like, all right, well, you know what? One more time again. <laughs> one more time, but play gooder this time. Yeah. Do you have any kind of um, pre-rehearsal ritual? Like what things you, because you're leading a rehearsal, you know, it's like what, what things go into getting ready for a rehearsal for you? I drive for an hour. <laughs> yeah, I think you do have some distance to cover <laughs> to get up there, don't you? <laughs> If there's traffic, I drive for an hour and a half. Right. Uh, no, nah, so I try to, we've been, I, I, we try to focus on something every week, right? Mm. And if anything's good has come out of this whole Corona business, we, uh, we've got some digital structure in place now. Mm. And I think we're going to keep doing it kind of forever. Where ideally after rehearsal, but before the weekend, so people have a chance to work on it. Uh, I'm doing this, and then the grade two snare lead is doing this as well. We'll uh, we'll upload something, right? Like we'll say, here's this tune. Send me a recording of it before next rehearsal. This is what we're gonna focus on, so that we don't like waste people's time. Like if they're working on a stress bay, but I really want them to work on reels this week. Like we we want to be congruent, right? Hmm. So so we're trying to get that polished and working really well so that it'll still work once we're going back to rehearsals so that we can send out some stuff. Hey, this is what we're working on this week. Focus on these three tunes, make sure they're slick and clean. And then you can work on other stuff after this stuff is super yeah, good. That makes sense. Cause I mean, I've, I've certainly had the experience many times where, you know, you spend all week working on the, the March in your new medley and then you show up to practice and like, all right, we're doing the stress bay tonight. Oh, geez. Well, I guess I'll get that music out for the very first time ever, you know, then you look like an idiot. <laughs> so, yeah. And it's different for new people coming in versus like if you've been there a while and you've got a repertoire, right? Yeah. 
Like we're, we're all working on these two tunes that are new this year, but if you're brand new, you've got to work on these other eight tunes as well. You're, Good luck. You're also learning your common marches and stuff and everything. Yeah. So, so it's like this, um, let's all get on the same page. These are our focuses for next week. That way everybody yeah. knows ahead of time. Well, that makes a lot of yep. sense. That makes a lot of sense. Is that something that you do largely independently? You do that for your drum corps, or is it something that goes top down from the pipe majors where it's like everybody, pipers and drummers alike, we're all working on this for this week? So each group has its own repertoire, mm. right? So it doesn't really carry over across groups. Um, I, I try to get on the same page with the pipe major. It doesn't always happen, but we, we try and get to where we're focusing on the same stuff. Well, surely it all lines up in the end anyway, right? It's all the same medleys and stuff, so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, what about performances? Do you have any kind of pre-performance ritual that you go through to make sure you're ready to get psyched out, you know, whatever it is that you have to do before going out there in a competition or onto a stage or whatever the case may be? Yeah, for a year before, you work really, really hard. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I used to play a lot on game day, but I try not to do that so much anymore, right? Like all the work has got to be before. You're not going to learn new music the day of, right? Mm -hmm. Like if you've got a thing that's been kind of bothering you and you think you can work it out, then maybe. But the flip side of that, if you've got a thing that's been bothering you and you can't get it sorted that morning, it's not going to be great when you go into the into the circle either, right? Yeah. Like if you've got this one movement that just always gives you trouble, Sometimes you'll psych yourself out by playing just that thing mm. all day. That makes sense. I've got a. I've I've been that guy. You know, I should I should apologize publicly to Don Smith for being that guy several times for White Peaks, where I'm sitting in the tent the day of competition, trying to learn. You know, really, if I'm honest, learn parts of the of the medley that we're about to go play. That's yeah. I did that all the way to Queen Mary one year. Oh yeah, just on the road. Like that that was my there. that was my uh, van ride was. <laughs> memorizing tunes yeah well it's nah, but like day of like uh solo wise it's it's a little bit different but uh but band wise we've got kind of a schedule of sorts sure be back at the tent at this time we're all going to play at this time pipes are going to get their pipes out at this time so we'll get our drums out at that time we'll get together at this other time and we'll do a couple runs and then we'll go up and go to final tuning and, and go on in yeah is it we picked up we picked up a few years ago Garden Valley picked up this idea from a band I can't remember if it was Wasatch or Utah possibly another one, but I think it was one of the two that they had just like this nice big whiteboard in the tent that just had the whole schedule out right there so anybody could know what time they needed to be back what time they were doing what yeah I don't know if you got it from us or not but we do have a whiteboard yeah we definitely got it from you guys <laughs> if I remember right we looked across the field at the Las Vegas games back in maybe 2018 or 2019 and saw it and we're like that's a really good idea yeah you can thank megan for that it's that a real, baby I, thank you megan that's it's, it is a really good idea because then you don't end up with people like you know constantly trying to find the pipe major the pipe major can't do anything but answer the same question a million times you know the same day and if nobody can find the pipe major then they don't know what time to go where it's that's a really good idea thank you megan yeah and we've we've tried some other stuff like we tried doing a slack group but getting everybody on the same app has proven difficult yeah, we've had that experience too. Most, we've got most of the band on onto Slack now, but it does happen that like you know sometimes somebody will get in and be like, "Oh, I didn't realize I deleted the app six months ago. What's been going on, guys?" You know. Like, oh. Yeah, and then everybody's got their pipes out and they're just walking back with half a turkey leg in their face, right? <laughs> right. Yep. Yep. <laughs> now, uh, if I'm if I I don't want to make you well here here we go. First of all, tell me how you feel about pineapple on pizza. Indifferent. If it's there, I'll eat it. If it's not, I won't. Mm. Now, is that because you just love pizza so much it doesn't really matter what they put on it? Or is it more like pizza is just pizza, so whatever? Yeah, pizza is just pizza. I, I, mean, I don't have strong opinions. Mm -hmm. There's there's some stuff I'd like. Don't don't put anchovies on it, right? But Sure. Now, And you did say that you do some cooking. Is there any sort of like genre of cooking you especially prefer? Are you a French, are you a, are you a French cooking guy? Are you a baker? What kind of stuff do you do? I've uh, been smoking kind of a lot, sort of, recently. Smoking like meats and stuff. The meats and stuff, yeah. Nice. And that, I don't know if that really counts because you like put the thing in the smoker and you push go. <laughs> that is my kind of cooking. I think that that absolutely <laughs> counts. And then you set a, you, you put your thermometer in it. And if you're swanky, you don't even have to set a timer because your thermometer just like tells you what temperature it is on your phone. Yep, yep. 
and you're like, ah, there we go. Another good day of cooking. <laughs> All right. Time to get the potatoes and rolls in because it's getting close. Yeah. Now, I want you to give me something beautiful or wise or ridiculously not beautiful or wise. Anything that com- that you think would be good to say for the for the fade out. Um, and I'll, I'll have drones fade in as you're, as you're saying this and you take your time cause I can cut out a pause, but I want you to give me a, a, a finish here. I don't, I don't know if I can be profound. No, you, well, you know, you don't you, tell me a knock, knock joke if you want to, <laughs> <laughs> if it's going to be like a limerick or something, just, you know, I'll, I'll take care of any, any, any questions. You, you'll take care of it post. in post prod. Yep. That's right. Play drums more. You heard it here, folks. Play more drums? Just play.